Welcome to Mrs. Taylor's math class. If this is your first time in my classroom, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel and turn on that bell so that you will be notified when I post another video. Now let's begin class. Today's topic is FTCE General Knowledge Math Test, Competency 1, Knowledge of Number Sense, Concepts, and Operations. If you would like to see the entire sample test, I will leave a link in the description box below. Which of the following symbols should be placed in the box to form a true statement? So I like to rewrite my problem just to give myself a little bit more space. To solve this problem, we can use the method of cross multiplication. So if I can multiply negative two times three, I get negative six. And then I can multiply negative one times five, and I'm going to get negative five. At this point, I can conclude that negative one-third is larger than negative two-fifths. And that's because the negative five is larger than the negative six. Let's show this on a number line. I'm going to start my number line out with zero, and then I'm going to put positive one on the right-hand side, just so you know that's where the positive numbers go. And then I'm going to proceed and put the negative numbers on the left-hand side. But they have to go in reverse order. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. So in this particular case, you see that negative 5 is greater than negative 6 because negative 5 is closer to 0. The regular price of a computer is $1,200, and the regular price of a printer is $300. An electronic store has a promotion that offers a 40% discount on the printer when the computer is purchased at regular price. What is the total cost of the computer and the printer at the promotional price? In order to get the total cost, I need to add the price of the computer to the price of the printer. But I have to subtract the 40% off the price of the printer. So let me rewrite the problem to include the price of each item. So $1,200 for the computer and then $300 for the printer, but I have to remember I gotta subtract that 40%. Let's take the math work for the printer off to the side. I need to figure out what is 40% of $300. The word of in this sentence means you need to multiply. When calculating 300 times 40%, you need to change your 40% to a decimal, 0 0.40. Once you do that, you can calculate the two quantities and you get 120. Or in this case, it's going to be $120 taken away from 300 to get you $180 for the price of the printer. Let's take that $180 and place it back into our main equation. $1,200 plus $180 is going to get us $1,380 for the total cost of the computer and the printer at the promotional price. Which of the following symbols should be placed in the box to form a true statement? We have three and four tenths and three and three hundred nine thousandths. I'm going to rewrite this so that there are the same number of digits behind the decimal point. The three and four tenths only has one number behind the decimal, so I have to increase that to three numbers. So I add an additional two zeros. The three and three hundred nine thousandths already has three numbers behind the decimal. At this point, you're comparing three hundred nine to four hundred. So which is the larger number? Of course, we know 400 is the larger number. So the final answer is going to be 3 and 4 tenths is larger than 3 and 309 thousandths. 
Students in a mathematics class are allowed to drop their lowest quiz grade. If a student earns the following grades, which grade will be dropped? I see that I have three fractions and 1%. So what I want to do is change each one of my fractions to a percent. Let's start with the 6 over 8. 6 over 8 can be simplified to 3 fourths by dividing both the 6 and the 8 by 2. Now, what you have to know about percents is that all percents are out of 100. So the good thing about 3 fourths is that I know that that number 4 can go into 100 evenly. So what number can I multiply 4 by to get 100? That number is 25. So if I multiply the 4 by 25, I have to multiply the 3 by 25. And so now I have 75 over 100, or I can write it as 75%. So let's take answer choice A, which is 6 over 8. Let's rewrite that as 75%. Now let's look at 2 thirds. Remember, all percents are out of 100. So what one number can I multiply 3 by in order to get 100? There is not a whole number that would allow me to do that. So we have to do division. How many times does 3 go into 2? So as I go through this process, I have to add on the decimal point and zeros. You will notice that I keep repeating the same numbers. I get a 6, I get an 18, I subtract it from 20, and then I get the 2, bring down the 0, and then I get a 6 again. And so now I'm just going to stop and multiply my decimal by 100 to get 66.6%. .6 or that's a repeating number, so that's why I put the line above the 6. So for answer choice B, let's rewrite it as 66.6%. .6 now let's look at 6 over 10. All percents are out of 100. So what one number can I multiply by 10 in order to get 100? It's going to be 10. So I multiply the 10 by 10 and the 6 by 10. And now I have 60 over 100, or 60%. So for answer choice D, let's rewrite that as 60%. Now let's go back and reread that question. If a student earns the following grades, which grade will be dropped? Now, of course, it says we want to drop the lowest quiz grade. So looking at my answer choices, I'm going to pick the 60%. An electronic store has a current inventory of 50 stereo systems. The lowest priced stereo system in the store sells for $800, and the highest priced stereo system sells for $3,000. Which of the following is the maximum amount of $3,000 systems on hand if the current inventory totals $111,000? So according to the question, I need to find the maximum amount of $3,000 systems I can have in my current inventory. So that's what my answer choices would represent. Let's take that 30 and multiply it by $3,000. That's going to get us $90,000. If there are 30 of the $3,000 system, how many of the $800 systems do we have? We have 20 because there are 50 stereo systems. 20 times $800 is going to get us $16,000. Together, the $90,000 plus the $16,000 is going to get us $106,000. Let's look at answer choice B. 32 times $3,000 is $96,000. If there are 32 of the $3,000 system, then there are 18 of the $800 system. 18 times $800 would get us $14,400. Now let's put the two systems together. $96,000 plus 
plus fourteen thousand four hundred would get us one hundred ten thousand four hundred dollars. Let's look at answer choice C. Thirty-five times three thousand dollars is going to get us one hundred five thousand dollars. So we have 15 of the $800 system. So we're going to multiply that by $800 to get $12,000. When we put the two systems together, we get $117,000. Answer choice D, 37 times $3,000. That's going to get us exactly $111,000. If there are 37 of the $3,000 systems, then it must be 13 of the $800 systems. So 13 times $800 is going to get us $10,400. Now let's put the two systems together. $111,000 plus $10,400 is going to get us $121,400. Now let's go back through all of our answers. C and D are above the amount of $111,000. So we can eliminate both of those answer choices. Answer choice A and B are both below the inventory totals of $111,000. However, B is the closest. So that's why we chose that answer. Simplify. This is an order of operations problem. So the order is parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication and division. But you read it from left to right. So if you're reading and multiplication comes first, then you do that first. But if division comes first, then you do that first. And then there's addition and subtraction. Same thing. If you read it from left to right, whichever comes first, that's what you do first. So I'm going to rewrite the problem just to give myself a little bit more space to write. My first step is to calculate everything inside the parentheses. So 15 minus 3 gets me 12. 2 plus 1 gets me 3. And 8 minus 6 gets me 2. In the first line, the parentheses are separated by two operations, division and multiplication. I brought those two operations down to be in between the 12 and the 3 and the 3 and the 2. Notice that we have division before multiplication. So I have to do my division first, then I multiply. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So C is our final answer. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Class is dismissed.